Hey everybody, it's Mountain Mike, out on the mountain. Thanks for joining in and checking and see what's going on today. Today we're going to do the auto water lube kit. And I'm so happy I could finally do this. So only having sawed two logs on this sawmill, I can tell you turn that on and off valve, on and off, is a chore. Every time you go to saw, you have to turn it on. And once you've made your pass through the log, you have to turn it off. It's not real efficient. The on-off valve is cheap, and it's pretty much junk. I don't see that working for a real long time before it just starts leaking on you. Getting it adjusted just right for your drip, you know, it just all takes too much time. So I definitely think the auto water lube kit and its efficiency that it's going to add to the sawmill is going to be greatly beneficial. That's uh, no doubt in, in two logs, I, I've already seen that real quick. Small things like that are well worth the trouble and the effort to go to. I definitely think the price on this item was a little high for what it is. So let's check it out before we install it. All right, so this is the auto water loop kit and this is what you get for $99. And actually the prices have gone up since I've bought this. So I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be more than $99. So what you get is you get your throttle cable. The next thing is going to be your on off slam latch actuator. And these two brackets, your nuts and bolts, and some more water tubing. So this should be a real quick installation. Let's get to it. So the first thing you want to do is lower your saw head. So next you want to take your water valve bracket and you're going to mount that on the underside of your horizontal winch cover. So the next thing is going to be our on off slam latch actuator. And you're going to put it right here and go to your extreme right. And we're going to use the machine screws to put that on. So the next thing you do is take your throttle cable that they provide, slip in your locking nut off you slip the cable through the slot on the very top here. We're going to use the top slot. You want your nuts to be about halfway on the threaded part there. So it'll look like that. So then we're going to take the other end and feed it through the keeper. Like so. All right. So the next thing you do once you get your cable through your cable keeper this spring on the end you got to open the end up just a little bit so once you got your spring from your throttle cable on there and your throttle cable put in place so when you pull the throttle handle this is what should happen okay so the water line that they provide is longer than the one they provided to you in the original kit so we're gonna reinstall the water line with the new one then you have to come up to your bracket you want to open your valve, run your line through it, and then just over to your on off. And it's real easy. We're going to give some slack. Now, let's try to put a little water through it and see if it shuts off. And no, it doesn't. So I want to point out when you put your throttle cable into the bracket that you want to leave the back nut as loose as possible and just set it in there. Once you've got your actuator onto the bracket, then you put your spring from your throttle cable onto your actuator. Go ahead and run your line through it where your actuator is pinching your line and go ahead and turn your tank on and let some water run through it and then adjust your throttle cable. That way you can see water running through your line because if you start adjusting it too much, it will pull your actuator back and allow water through your line. So run your water line through it, turn your on off valve on on your tank, right yeah, and then adjust your throttle cable. It does not take much pressure to start releasing water through this. 
And lastly, you want to install the cover. All right. So let's see if we got it. I'm going to pull the throttle handle and water should come out down there. Just like we want. Now all I have to do is find a speed of the drip that I like and go with that. And everything will be set and ready and waiting for me. It'd be a lot easier than turning that dinky little valve on and off. So it's a pretty pricey little item, but once you've run the mill a few times, you definitely see the value in it. So I would say this is an item that could be possibly reproduced fairly cheaply, but it may not be worth the trouble. It might be better just to spend the money with Norwood and go ahead and just get life going. I spent my money. I'm not saying I regret it, but it was pricey. But everything's pricey. So I think in the end it evens out. It's definitely going to help production and just the ease of use in the mill. There's so many things that you got to take into consideration when you operate your mill every time that you go to saw into a log. It's easy to forget a step. Sawing into your log rest. So they say there's two kinds of sawyers. Those that have sawn into their log rest and those who haven't yet. I haven't yet. I've just begun. And that just tells you how much there is to keep on your mind when you're using your sawmill. So taking one less step out of the equation is definitely a good thing. The installation was a breeze and not much to it. You'll have that done in no time. Well, I'm Mountain Mike, out on the mountain. Till next time.